Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Affinity Photo and the Ripple filter. Maybe not one of the filters that are used that often. However, I'm just going to run through some of the possible ways of using this filter. So first, we've got this image here. This is now image15.jpg. You can download it from the graphicextras.com website. So you can quickly find that and download it and use it if you wish to use it in this tutorial. Now, what it can do, got this design, I'm just going to apply a filter down to distort and ripple. There it is there. So it's filter, distort and ripple. Also, you can use it as a non-destructive, super useful because this other one, the filter one, is a destructive effect. But you can use it as a non-destructive effect, layer, new layer filter layer and distort and ripple. As always, the position of these things are completely different. I'm not certain why sometimes in the filters menu they're in different positions. There's no real, as far as I can see, logic to the order. It'd be nice if they're all alphabetical. However, let's just go from the filter first. So filter and distort and ripple. So there, all you've got is intensity. And also you've got an origin point, which is useful as well. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna just do a little bit of a ripple there. If you do it too intense, you can see what happens. You get this sort of weird sort of webbing sort of, it's not very particularly great. I mean, if that's what you want, of course, you can reduce it down and you get much more, I think a nicer effect with like about 30 or 40. Or what you can also do, you can change the origin point. You see a little plus there. Now, to be honest, the little plus, I always think it suggests that you can click on it in multiple places. So you just click and click and click and click, and it would add multiple origin points for the ripple. However, that's not the case. You just, all you can do is you can, how have you noticed as you ripple, move out further? If you go further and further, the ripple will get bigger and bigger. So you can, unfortunately, of course, you'd have to use a navigator to make it, but you can push the origin point really a long way away and you can then get real intense effect there. And also you can then change intensity. You can see then you've got a bit, it's a pity that it's not more controlled by thing in the, the settings as well as the ripple. It'd be nice if you could do that, but and maybe apply different variations of the way it's rippled. However, maybe a square or something, a square design. But you've got that ripple there. And of course you can just say like, just put it there, put it there and apply. That's all it is. That's all they've got there. But of course what you can do, you can always apply it again. You always go to filter and you can repeat the ripple. You can see, repeat it very easy and you can create a much greater obviously ripple there like a couple of times and you can get oh, quite an interesting more like the ripple that I think that you should be able to get from just applying it once but you have to do it four or five times to get a half decent ripple effect however it's also good to apply the go here filters and distort and ripple there it is Again, I have to also look for it because it's different positions in different places. So you think, right, so you can apply it there. And what you can do, you can always go back, filters, distort, and ripple again, and then change the origin. It always starts at zero. It'd be really nice if they made their filters remember what the last value they used. You know, if it was like 30, it should be 30. You should be able to default it to 30. Because I think zero is a completely pointless value for the ripple. So just set it to a value there, you can see, and then you can of course vary it. So you can put different positions. So you can have a ripple start there, ripple there, ripple there, ripple there, and so on, so on. So you can create all kinds of different designs with those ripples, which I think can be quite interesting. You build them up with low values. That's the thing, the low values is probably works best. So keep the intensity quite low, put the ripples in different places, maybe further out, and just build up a very complex design of ripples. Again, depending on what you want. If you want sort of obviously a, a water, the ripples in the water, that's just it. But if you want more sort of unusual visual effects, then you can, of course, apply it multiple times. What you can also do, you can always go to, and this I've got layers over here, you can apply on layers, so you can always go to layer, and you can duplicate that layer. So there, got a duplicated layer there, and then you can go to filters, and you can go distort, and again, to ripple, again, a lowish setting, and you can extend out the origin point there and you can see the effect there. Click apply. And then again, if you want to, you can repeat ripple again, and you can see and create some
very interesting combinations there and maybe duplicate that design to create quite an intense rippled background there. So I do that, multiple copies. Of course, let's just get rid of that. Now, what you can also do, you've got view and studio and you can go to channels there. Well, you know, you can say the composite red. So you can select the red channel. So you don't have to use it for all the composite red. So you can see only that one's act active. All the others are not active now. So what you do, filters, go down to, hmm, strange, because it should, oh, not the layer. Now filters, distort. So if you're not selecting the layer, it doesn't make a difference. If you've got even the channel, obviously the layer wasn't selected. Anyway, there's only one layer, so I'm not certain why it shouldn't be selected, but then go to Ripple, go to Intensity again, and maybe go off, off there, right off that side, click Apply, then go to the Composite Green, go to Filters, Distort, and you could, of course, use the same Ripple if you want, you don't have to, and then go and change Intensity, put it up to a bit more sensible value than zero, and you can then go over the other side. Apply. Now you can bring it back straight up just by clicking here. So then you can see what you've got. You've got these reds, you've got the greens, and of course, you, if I had done blue as well, you'd have blues mixed in there as well. And you can repeat that multiple times, different angles, different locations to create a very abstract, different ripple design there. So I just put that all back. Everything's all active again. Quite often I end up working, suddenly finding the red one kicks in again. So there's a layer, background layer, selected. Well, what you can also do, you can use selections. So you can go over here. So I'm just gonna use this selection. You can use any selection, of course. Maybe just select it there. And maybe apply it if you want. You can modify it, you go to select, you can feather it, so to say. Again, it always sets it to zero. I always wonder why, because you think you've just set it to 10 or 15, whatever you use last. What's the point of feathering with zero? Makes no sense as a default. Anyway, apply. So you've got that feathered now. And then what you can do, you can again go to filters, distort, and again down to ripple. You can see the ripple effect is just applied to that area there. You can see the ripple just outside as well because of the feathering as well. And you can do, of course, all numbers of combinations. You can move the selection, put, reposition it and so on and so on. Deselect that. Now also what you can do, you've got layers. You can always go to, oh, before I go any further, also can use, of course, other shapes and things. So I'm gonna to go to here to the, the triangle tool, or whatever, rounded rectangle tool, one of them. And you can just quickly create a shape. So a vector shape like that. You can go to filters and again distort and go down to ripple. It's the ripple there, you can see the ripple there, and you can go obviously for the further if you go quite close, it's very, very subtle. The ripples you have to go further out. Unfortunately, of course, it doesn't mean you have to really go out right. I don't know if there's a limit to, but you have to make the origin point really quite a way away to get a really decent ripple on this, which is a pity because the intensity will see it just makes it crunch it, crunch it closer, which maybe is not what you particularly want. So I think it's just pity there is not another option where you can control the power of the uh, this so you can make it really extend out. There's a bit of a trouble if you want that, you just can't get that effect. So click apply. And you can see, unless you apply it a couple of times, of course. Filter, repeat ripple. You can apply it a couple of times. Repeat ripple, repeat ripple. Again, five or six times. You can search it see, Near enough, you've wiped out completely the original rectangle. Now it's sort of completely going. You can see you can create some, like a, obviously for your hair, <laughs> something like that anyway, or someone's hair anyway. And you can create all kinds of designs like that. So, right, I'm just gonna now go back, remove that. Also, what you can do, of course, you can do it with type. So I'm just gonna go for there, for artistic type, and click there. Oh, I've just got, so let's get the A. 
Sometimes it just does. Yeah, there it is. Okay. And you can resize that and you can, of course, create all kinds of things. But what you can do, you can also use the ripple with this as well. You can also change the color. So I'm just going to change the color because it's hard to see against that. Maybe let's go for white. You can see it a bit better like that. So again, filters and distort and ripple. Again, zero, of course. Got that value there. And you can push it out to a bit further away. And you can see your ripple applied there. Apply. And again, if you want to, repeat ripple to really distort that A, if that's what you want, of course. What you can also do is, because it's a layer, and also this is much easier, is layer and new live filter layer and distort and ripple. Now this is this time it's at the top, right at the top there, ripple. And you can see the effect applied there. But unfortunately, because what happens, it ripples and you end up with seeing the white at the back, which maybe you don't particularly want. And you can modify the blending modes, which I will do in a sec, but what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna apply it, and you can again vary this. But the thing is, of course, with this, you can always go back and re-edit again. So if you've got this design, you think, oh, you know what, I don't want the ripple there. I can double click and I can just change origin point. It doesn't have, I don't have to change this. I can change it if I want. Again, close it. But I would also use blending mode. So you can run through blending modes if you want to give, as well as opacity as well. But however, you can also, I'm just gonna just go to that. I'm just gonna go layer and duplicate. So you can see it's duplicated. And now what I can do, I'm just going to get rid of that one. Delete. Now I'm just going to have this one. So that's the only one, that layer, that new layer has got this ripple effect. And I'm just going to reduce it down in size. You can see then the result of that. You can see the ripple on the edge and you can see the background design as well. You can see you reduce it down. And again, still, if you want to edit, double click. And then you can change setting just for that layer and you can see the effect as it obviously goes through and you can see the background and also what you can do you can always go again with different blending modes color and so on and so on and that's just applied to that one this one is completely untouched so that's a run through of a fair amount of fun i'm certain there's more things that you could probably do with uh, the ripple but it's probably not one of those powerful of filters, but uh, I'm certain that uh, there's many great things that can be done with it, and that's the key thing. You know, there's always some creative possibilities with this sort of feature. So, hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always adding new tutorials all the time, near enough every day. Also adding them on to with about Photoshop, Finity Photo, Finity Designer, Publisher. Also, this sort of feature will work with Publisher as well, if you've got Finity Photo, which is super useful. Also, Critter, Painter and many others. Also, if you've got any comments, any things, maybe you've, you know, you've got even better ideas, just tell me, please, and put them in the comments. And you know, what else can I do with this sort of filter? It's really great to explore the filters, and I'm there's always someone that's got even different ideas that can be used as well. That's great. However, also if maybe I've done something wrong, always let me know about that as well. It's always appreciated because. Quite easy to do something wrong. You think, nah, that's that's rubbish. You shouldn't do that. Also, a dislike or like. Always appreciated. Thank you much.